Today we're going to talk about Cracked Heat Exchangers for homeowners. So this is the first homeowner-driven content I've ever done, but I've had a lot of people reach out to me, asking me about heat exchangers and Cracked Heat Exchangers, and I've had a lot of technicians that have had their concerns as well. So let's make sure we address it. Now that heat exchanger's job for a gas furnace is to keep the flames and also the leftover gases from combustion, such as CO2, CO, carbon monoxide, all of those gases separate from the air in the house, and it exchanges the heat from the flames and the gases to the air in the house. In other words, the flame and all the gases are burning on the inside of this heat exchanger, and the air from the house is flowing on the outside. So that metal keeps it, keeps it separate. If that metal has a crack or a hole in it, it has the possibility of allowing those gases to mix with the air in the house, and that could lead to carbon monoxide poisoning. So if you do have a cracked heat exchanger, we need to replace that heat exchanger or replace that furnace. And it's something that should definitely be taken seriously. Now, a lot of the heat exchangers have a 20 year warranty on them. So if you do have a cracked heat exchanger, have them look at that warranty to see is there gonna be warranty on that heat exchanger to so have it replaced or can you use any of that kind of funds towards that new furnace? Now, the other thing we need to talk about is kind of a little darker side. Is that technician telling you the truth? Is it really cracked? How serious is that crack? These are some things that we definitely need to address today. There's a lot of business people that have gotten in HVAC. There's a lot of potential money to be made. So a lot of business minds are jumping into the trades, especially private equity companies that are buying up a lot of these local shops and converting them into sales businesses. And anybody in sales knows once you get in the door and get that homeowner in front of you, your chances for sales go up tremendously. The old vacuum cleaner days, once they got in the door and they could do their demonstration with the people there in person, their chances of getting sales were really good. So in HVAC, the customer is calling us, inviting people into their home. So their chances of sales are really good. There's even companies out there that specialize in doing sales training. They literally advertise that they're going to convert your technicians into salespeople. So that does bring in some concerns. And those concerns being, are they telling you that you need a new gas furnace because you really do need a new gas furnace? Or are they telling you that just because they want to get their sales and their quotas up? I talked to a technician just today who was chewed out, cussed out by his employer because he didn't get a salesperson out there because the furnace was old. Now, there was nothing wrong with the furnace after he fixed it, replaced the blower motor, fixed the furnace, everything's running good. He got cussed out because he didn't get a salesperson out there. There's technicians that have quotas that they have to sell so many furnaces every month so they can keep their job. And they're trying to pay bills for their family. And it's really unfortunate that this is happening. It actually ticks me off that companies are out there taking advantage of people like this. On the other hand, you have technicians out there with actual holes in heat exchangers and they're telling the customer and the customer like, nope, I don't believe you. And they're running with a high risk scenario. And the technician's like, I'm trying to save you here. And the customer's like, nope, we don't believe you. So we need to talk about how to bring both these sides together so that the homeowner, you are protected. So there's several things to do that. One, let's talk about any house has any gas burning appliance. We need to make sure that you have a low level CO monitor, low level carbon monoxide monitor, not an alarm. An alarm will not sound off until you're at least 30 parts per million, but usually much higher than that for a certain period of time. Carbon monoxide builds up in your body over time. The longer you're exposed to it, the longer those health effects are. So a low level CO monitor is going to alarm you before it becomes an emergency. When the alarm goes off, call the fire department. When a low level CO monitor goes off, call in a professional in the home that's going to be checking not just the gas furnace, but also the water heater, the fireplace, attached garages. A lot of technicians will see a crack in the heat exchanger and they're like, oh, we got to protect you from carbon monoxide but they never test the whole entire house. The furnace itself is one of the fewer components that's going to be actually leaking carbon monoxide. It's still serious. It's still something that should be addressed, but it should also be checking the water heater. A backdrafting water heater is a big likelihood of having carbon monoxide come in the house. In other words, if you're running the dryer and the bathroom fans at the same time, a lot of times the house will be under what we call negative pressure. It's actually pulling air back through the flue pipes of either the furnace or the water heater. And that's actually pulling the carbon monoxide in or even a fireplace. A lot of carbon monoxide poisonings can happen from simply starting the car in the garage and backing it out. That very short time of starting a car up has a high level of CO because everything's cold. They have very poor combustion 
and that seal built up in the garage, it moves under the doors to the walls into the house. So your first defense is to have a low level seal monitor. I don't sell them. I don't get any money on particular brands, but make sure it's non UL rated that it's actually a low level monitor by law. They can't call it an alarm. And when that sounds off, call somebody that can inspect that, not the fire department. If it's the alarm, call the fire department. If it's a low level monitor sounding off, call a professional. Now, the next step is ideally you're calling somebody who has a certification in combustion analysis. Somebody who's had training for carbon monoxide. The National Comfort Institute is a great training organization that specializes in combustion analysis and looking at the whole house. There's lots of people that are trained to understand not just the furnace, but the whole house together. So we'll make sure we're looking at that and also understanding how combustion is working. Some heat exchangers, you can have a crack and it does need to be replaced, but it's not as much of an emergency as say another model of heat exchanger that would allow the carbon dioxide to vent into the house at a much higher level. And also making sure that that furnace is burning correctly so that heat exchanger doesn't crack and actually has put out the right amount of heat as it's supposed to. A lot of heat exchangers are putting out way more CO than they should even though they're not leaking into the house. So making sure you have a technician that has a combustion analysis is that first step. Now I want to clarify, there are people out there that know what they're looking for, understand combustion, that don't have an official certification, and that's okay too, but ideally they're looking at more than just that furnace. So that's your first level of defense is ideally in a perfect world, everybody would have that certification and understands that bigger picture. The second thing is how pushy are they? Are they really pushing you hard to buy a new furnace? Because that's usually a red flag that right there. If they're really pushing you to do that, you want to take that into consideration. And what kind of proof do they have? Are they taking you in there and actually physically showing it to you? Are they actually putting a camera up inside so that you can see what's happening? Or are they even showing you just a picture from another furnace? I ran into companies that actually had pictures from other gas furnaces. It wasn't even the customer's furnace. I myself have gone out to houses and checked, as a second opinion, checked and found that there was nothing wrong with the heat exchanger. Did three different independent tests and there was nothing wrong with the heat exchanger. The technician was simply trying to get a cell. And I've had technicians all across the country with these same experiences. Because of that push, you have to get the sales, you have to get these quotas in. And that's very unfortunate. So the next thing is a second opinion. And that second opinion shouldn't just be somebody you're calling to tell you what you want to hear. It's it's actually checking it. They're looking at that heat exchanger. They're checking the the furnace. They're doing a full combustion analysis. Somebody's giving it you all of the data they need. Now, when you do that, you also make sure that you're getting multiple opinions. So you got to crack the heat exchanger. Let's get multiple people coming out to give you quotes. And when I say giving you quotes, evaluation, you should be paying for that evaluation. If you call for a quote, you're most likely getting a salesperson. You want an actual professional that's evaluating the situation of your whole house. What furnace is going to be best for you? Is the furnace going to be sized right? Are they going to do a heat load calculation? Because most furnaces across the country are way oversized. Making sure that there's correct amount of combustion air, that the flue pipe is correct, that the duct works correct. We're not just talking about pulling out a furnace and putting another one in. It needs to be sized to where it matches the house. So if you're coming in and getting a quote, don't just look for the cheapest price because you'll be right back where you started. You want to make sure you're looking at somebody that's a professional, looking at the whole house as a system. If you call for free quotes, a lot of times you just get a salesperson coming out there and they're just wanting to make the sell. And their whole job is to make sure they convince you to buy it uh, through them over some other company. So, you know, a lot of times you're going to have to pay for that. Maybe it's $150 for somebody to come out and do an evaluation or do a heat load calculation or give you something other than, hey, here's our price for doing it. And we got whatever warranty and we make you feel good. There's literally companies out there that train people how to be your friend because people buy from their friends. So they want to be all snuggled up to you and be cool with you. And then they try to leverage that. Well, don't you want to buy from me? I'm your friend. So to avoid some of these high sales tactics, get multiple quotes and make sure you don't make a decision right then. Even if you really want to make the decision right then, say you need to think about it. And if they get mad that you need time for you to think about a decision for your home, they're not the right company. And there's a lot of wrong companies out there, or my opinion, wrong companies. According to the company, their job is to make money, and they do that through high-pressure sales, and, and that's their choice. I'm just trying to prepare you for what you need. And again, if you have a whole net heat exchanger, you need to be looking at replacing the heat exchanger or replacing the whole furnace. So just a quick recap, make sure that you have a low-level seal monitor in your house on top of the alarm because that low-level monitor is going to warn you before there's an issue. And you call somebody out and they say that you have a cracked heat exchanger, take that very seriously, get a second opinion and look at that. 
And if you do need a new furnace, get multiple quotes. And ideally, they're looking at the whole house as a system and not just the price. If you're looking at price alone, you're going to be hurt in the end. So make sure you're looking at the whole house system, the proper insulation of that furnace, and don't make a decision right away. Ideally, you have some kind of a backup heat. And if you don't have an issue with your furnace, right now is the time to get some emergency backup heat because you don't want to be on Christmas night trying to make these decisions and you need heat right then. You want to be able to have time to make these decisions without being rushed so that you're protected and you have the best furnace replacement possible. Hopefully that helps. And again, it's not that all these HVAC companies are trying to take advantage of you. There's some great companies out there. It's just that these companies now are really learning about sales and typically, not always, not always, but a lot of times the company that has the most advertising also has the most sales because they have to pay for the advertising. So when they get these fancy radio jingles and billboard where and on the radio and on TV and everywhere you look on your computer, there's ads popping up. They have to pay for that. So usually those are your more expensive companies, not always, most of the time. So make sure you get multiple quotes from bigger companies, mid-sized companies, and also small companies and compare them and find out what's going to be best for you, your financial situation. Hopefully that helps. Make sure that you never stop learning. And if you like this content, let me know below. Maybe I'll make some more. Have a great day.